Hi and welcome, this is How to Build a Creative Business. I am your host, Ali Hart. I am an artist and a businesswoman. And on this podcast, we unravel the ins and the outs of what it really means in 2022 to bring your creative practice and your business mind all in one so that you're the best version of you. I really hope you enjoy the episode. It is great to have you back. Today we are going straight into review and react. Review and react. How are you feeling? How are you doing? <clears throat> Have you ever done the exercise? I talked about it a few episodes, well, like probably last year. And then with a few of the coaches that I had on who were more into the spiritual side of things. But if you, this is not, this is not spiritual or religious, but right now, wherever you are, if you have something in your hand, set your coffee cup down. You know, I always like to associate that you have coffee. Maybe it's just the new year. And because I always want a coffee when I sit down to record. But I want you to put your hands together, your fingertips so they are touching. Close your eyes if you can. And just gently tap your fingers and feel the vibrations down your whole bones. Right down to your elbows. You are alive. Every vibration that goes down there is indicating that you're alive you're here so welcome it is great it is so as you can see I'm so energized for the year ahead I look at my to-do list beside me and I have two really big commissions that are <clears throat> taking up a lot of my time in a really good way but they're tricky you know and when people when you grow to where I am now which even if I look in from the outside sometimes I don't believe it and I actually was recording for Ruth I was recording a new beginning and you'll have listened to the beginning before you come on here I nearly used the word successful in it a successful businesswoman and I couldn't do it I, I actually couldn't do it because I still feel like I live on the edge a lot of the time by the seat of my pants but um, on paper I am successful and the fact that return custom happens daily is just a beautiful thing so I don't even remember what the point of me sharing that about being alive about being energized about oh my to-do list so yes now that I'm at a stage where people are giving me a lot of money to to make commissions um like the pressure shouldn't be on because what happens with me, I don't know if you're listening to this and you're an established artist with a big set of dealers who come, you know, art dealers, art enthusiasts. Anyone who commissions me now mostly has an idea that they love art and that they love my art. And the majority of them say, look, you, you interpret that as you see fit. But you will know if you're a painter and you're listening to this, no matter what stage you're at, it, there's added pressure. Like I, I know there is, there's added pressure, but there are definitely some clients because I'm so fussy about commissions now, but there are clients that I just know that they love the marks that I make. And that is, that is just sweet, sweet joy. However, I still in my own head overthink, I overplay. And sometimes that can be seen in, in the pieces, but I'm at the stage at the minute where I could be finished. I've got some little bits to finish. <clears throat> so that's taken up the, that's like the eat my frog part of the day. Um, I've got that. And then I'm also just, it's brilliant. So this is another example where reviewing is really good um review and react so there's a bible verse i'm never going to be able to quote it because I'm, I'm terrible at remembering things but it's basically like you know about planting seeds and you don't necessarily know how they're going to grow over the past four five years i ran free workshops for kids in schools then COVID hit, so my YouTube channel really was where schools were finding the content because I couldn't visit. But I think we'll be a huge waiting list. I remember that whenever Gemma worked for me. But I went to miles away, like 100 miles away, and um, five miles away. I did back-to-back -back schools. 
I brought my own materials. It was a 45 minute session for these kids. And I did think, what am I, what am I doing this for? Like, what am I doing this for? But now what is happening is I am now getting schools who are using their funding for me to be an artist in residence or a visiting artist for the day. And it was only when we sat and we reviewed where these were coming from and we asked the teachers how they knew about me. Uh, and one of them's down in Dublin. And that was because I had, and I'm up in Belfast, is because I had ran these free workshops and that's where it started. So you must look at where you've come. You must do it. Anyway, so that's where I'm at at the minute. Reviewing content. Okay, <clears throat> I haven't really been brilliant at this and that's probably because of uh, a fear. It's probably because I overthink and take things personally. But the more you, look, just to be totally frank, the more outgoings you have, then you actually can't afford to take things personally. And that's speaking from my own experience. You have got to look at things logically. For me, that's having staff who are able to look at the figures and do databases and spreadsheets. Uh, and an accountant who is brilliant. Hi, Susie cooks the books. Um, but it's important for you to look at what's sold, if anything. What contacts? You know, I'm all about deeper connections. Who did you contact this month? Could you write down two people a month that you decide you want to get in touch with? Even mentoring people, you know, review where, if you want someone to mentor you or coach you, look at look at what it is, that, where the loophole is. Look at the sales that came in. Look at the content that you put out. Look at the... Um, the outgoings so January was a month where unfortunately you know for me the studio wages um transport electricity water rates uh framing canvas prints and um, post and packaging all of those things weigh up to like you would fall off your seat what they weigh up to but that if I don't sit and look at those figures, then I cannot see what I need to do. I, if I don't react to those figures, I don't know how to go to the next stage. I actually don't even know how to go to the next month. So this year, we have decided every month, at the end of every month, to do a review. So I would encourage you to do the same. Weekly review, monthly review, yearly, annual review. Annual review is, bare, is kind of a given. Okay, that's like, you know, oh, we're going into the next year. I'm going to look back at all my best squares, best liked photos, whatever. That's not the fluff I'm talking about. We often sit down and we do our annual review because we have to do taxes. Boring. I'm talking about the real, like, what is the lead? What, what brought a customer to buy a piece from you? Where did they come from? What button did they click to get where? What site brought them across? Get into the background. You know, if you have a website, that's what you've got reports on there for. You go to your dashboard, you look at reports, you go to um, even like even your social media, you can look at reports. It's not difficult. It's there. You can do it on your coffee break. And what it will do is it will give you ammunition. And I've talked about this before about data but that data is data is important and that's why people around the world are virtual assistants and all they do for some people is look at the data and then you react to that and i know i've talked about it in the past but i i'm really i'm 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 sharing with you that i'm honoring that action in my own business uh, we do it on a weekly basis um, but we're going to try to do that more on a weekly basis. So Sharon and I have a meeting on a Monday and on a Friday. Or Friday, because I really like Fridays and because Sharon has squeezed out all her hours during the week. Um, because even there this morning, like I'm recording this now at nine in the morning, I had sent her uh, inquiries that had come to me. So that just adds on to her plate. So that squeezes into her hours. And um, she'd already reduced her hours anyway. So we're doing really well at being very efficient but on our Friday we've reduced it down to nearly a phone call 
And it's been brilliant because it's bam, bam, bam. This happened, this sold, this didn't sell, this person didn't answer the phone, this person didn't get back to us. Why is that happening? How can we start again on Monday? And that is something I value in my own business. I see it as growth as well. Everything this year that I want to share with you about attention, where is your attention? Where? What intention do you have? What do you have? How are you reviewing? How are you reacting? I'm I'm with you. I want you to grow. I don't want this to be the year where you look back and you think, oh, I listened to, I listened to, you know, some podcasts and uh, started my notebook and, uh, you know, I opened an Instagram page and, uh, yeah, did a market. I, I want you, I want you to say, I did a market and I got this. I opened an Instagram page and I got four followers, but one of those followers clicked on my website. I built a website and I could see that I needed X amount to do this. I want this to be with the year where you review, you react, so that this is your best year. And I don't I don't hang about saying that myself too. I do feel the pressure because I make these leaps like studios and um, travel and staff. But that's because we get to we get to create this. How to build a creative business? Well, I can I can tell you how I'm doing it, and thank the Lord. Thirteen years I'm coming into now, um, of being in business. Of course, the first seven of those were a pile of poop. Um, but when I was doing stuff for my accountant last week, last month, talking about reviewing and reacting. I sat in the back of the studio and it's right at the very back. So there's basically, you come in and it's like a gallery type space. Well, it's getting messier. Then you go into the next space where's the working space. That's where I hide. Then at the back, there's a random shower because it used to be a chiropractor's. But I also store in there and there's a messy sink. And then on the other side of that is a little tiny kitchen. But there's a wall where it's a glass wall and... It has all of my storage in it. And in the storage is receipts, our, our receipts. So there are receipts, there is information, there's HMRC. And I found a page, which was from 2013. And it was, so my second boy was two. And then I found another page from 2015. And it was, my, my friend had written it. So my sister-in-law used to help me do my books and we had this big diary book and we would just go through my written diary so I didn't have everything online. And then she would help me do receipts and she's left-handed so her scrawly writing was all over this book. Then there's these piles of receipts. There's receipts that were printed out. Now I use QuickBooks online. It's not an advert, but QuickBooks is brilliant if you're using that. I should have mentioned that in the planning workshop or planning in the planning podcast. Um, but on one of those sheets that my friend Jeremy, who used to be a financial advisor, he's not anymore, but he was my he still is like my financial advisor, to be honest. He had written down in pencil um, gas, electricity, petrol. Da, 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 da. And at the time we were with one car. We had a people carrier that we sold for um, nine hundred pounds to WeBuyAnyCar.com. Again, not an advert, but I mentioned it before, and it is funny because my husband came back from the salvage yard that time and said they really do buy any car.com. So the car we had, I had no idea about figuring out my mileage. But this was a piece of paper and it was everything written down and my um, my profit for the year was £7,000. £7,000. I think that was in 2000. Uh, I don't, I can't actually remember if that was the 2013, 2015. But that was amazing to me. I had nothing to show for it. I had no money in the bank. Um, and how amazing that I have grown step by step since then. I don't actually know if I've come up for air until recently. <laughs> Because I then had another baby and he was, yeah. So 
review and react. So for me, I sat in that moment. Anyway, when Susie came, we had a bit of a giggle and she said, no, don't throw out those ones from 2017. That's great. So review and react. I reacted to that by just sitting in that studio, which I have dreamed of before. And I didn't even know what it was like this time last year, what sort of studio I'd moved to. I just talked about it. And I reacted to those stats and that data by being thankful. And there's a lot to be thankful for. So you might be at that stage where you're scribbling on a piece of paper. And if you are, let's go. This is exciting. And if you're sitting and you're looking at your ins and your outs and your turnover is more like 100k a year, also well done you. It's like, how did you get there? How did you reach that? And what have you got to show for it? What does your life look like with that? That's the one thing I keep looking at. It's like, what was my life like then? What's my life like now? Review and react. Review and react. And you will keep growing. Okay, I'm going to go. That is my podcasts done for this month. Uh, For Ruth, I can send them across to her. And then I'm just really happy that I find this sweet spot in my house where there's no echo. Thanks for sticking with me even when there was echo or whenever I decide just to record on my phone in the moment. Have a great day. Have a blessed day. Believe in all that you do. You're doing it. You're doing it. Thanks, guys.